everyone and welcome to How's It Rate. Uh, today we're going to continue on um, our knife um, video. This will be video two of, um, I don't know how many to come yet, but this is video number two. Uh, in the first video we talked about our chef's knife and uh, the components uh, and the materials that they're made of. Um, in this video today I just want to show you another knife. This is more um, fancy okay um, sometimes it's uh, promoted by some of the celebrity uh, chefs out there um, they seem to be using knives that have a great look and different features and all but I still think that the original one that I showed you number one the chef's knife or otherwise known as a uh, French knife um, very all, uh, very um, um, versatile um, it's, it's definitely the, the king of knives in the kitchen this one here, if you notice, is, is not too much different, um, but if I hold them side by side, you can see that the, the original one I showed you is a bit longer, okay, and also the blade is a bit wider, all right. Uh, this one is shorter, and it doesn't have quite the pronounced tip that this one has. And as I mentioned, you don't use the tip very often, but what you, when you do, you want the tip to be more like this than this one. Also. This knife is a good knife. It's made very well. It's made out of carbon stainless steel, okay, and it's got all the good features that you want. My knuckles aren't banging against the cutting board, um, so it has all those, those good features, okay. Now, you'll notice that when you cut with this one, if, you, if, you're, if you're cutting in the manner that you're supposed to be, like this, all right, when you're slicing, you'll notice that you don't quite have as much of a cutting surface as you do with this one and also this one comes up a bit higher okay so you've got better cutting action on this one and by the way this motion that I'm using here it's almost like the um, uh, on, a, on a steam engine if you've ever seen those trains in the movies where that cylinder goes like that okay well that's the proper method to uh, to use when you're when you're cutting and I'll, I'll show you this we're going to demonstrate it with the chef's knife this is not the motion you use with some of the other knives okay basically the chef's knife is the only time you really do this motion with few exceptions so on this knife here it's got some great features yes it looks classy yes you look like you're a pro holding it yes it's got the fluted blade like I mentioned where um, these little indentations in the blade uh, prevent the food from from sticking or should prevent the food from sticking I can tell you that it really doesn't work that well um, it's got a full tang it's got um, a nice handle here I don't know if it's wood it doesn't look like it it looks like it's a composite material it's a very um, heavy knife for its size it's almost actually it's more heavy than this one here but um, it's still just a little bit lacking in, 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 in the ability of it to slice like this other knife. Okay, so enough said about those, but I did want to show you what um, I guess some people are calling a chef's knife. Uh, it's being marketed as an, uh, an all-purpose knife. They come in different sizes and shapes. Some are longer than this, but they just don't look like the tradi traditional chef's knife or uh, French knife. Now, um, <clears throat> this knife, okay, moving on, would be the next knife you'd probably find in your collection. And this is sometimes called a utility knife or a pantry knife, and its main purpose is for cutting uh, lettuces, fruits, vegetables, and if you notice, when you go down on the board, the board or the blade will not lay flat before my knuckles hit. And that's because it's really not meant to be used like the chef's knife. So we can live with that. You're going to see that on a lot of the other knives that aren't meant to, to use that rocking motion. Now, also on this knife, I just wanted to show you the difference between a full tang, which is the metal from the blade going all the way to the end of the handle, versus one that is, well, not even halfway. Okay, this is not a good knife. This is a very cheap knife. It'll do the job if you don't, you know, put too much stress on it, you keep it out of the dishwasher, it may last you a while. But 
it is not a good knife simply because of that tang not being extended all the way back to the handle here. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned that on the other video, but uh, most knives do have an area there that kind of keeps it from slipping out. It's this little knobby here, and you'll see it on all the knives here. There's one there, and there's one there. So, um, again, with this knife here, um, the pantry knife or utility knife, whichever you want to call it, the blade is going to range probably within six to eight inches. You might find one out there that's uh, a little longer, ten inches. This one actually may be, now this is a short one, but um, they will be long and narrow with a point. Important to remember, okay, with a point. Um, when you're cutting with this knife here, you're going to be used probably cutting like a, a piece of lettuce or something. So, you, you, you know, it's it's not quite um, necessary to have. I personally would not recommend buying this knife if you're on a budget. If it comes with a set, great. But I guarantee you, you're probably not going to use it much. And by the way, most of the people that I find that, that don't use like their chef's knife all the time and they'll reach for the other knife is simply because they haven't taken the time to maintain this knife. They haven't sharpened it becomes dull, they put it back in their block or wherever they keep it, okay, and knowing that it's not dull, they're going to reach for the other knife. And eventually the same thing is going to happen to this one. It's going to get dull and they won't use this one and they'll use something else. Um, now, on a budget again, this knife, the chef's knife, the real one, or even this one, will do the job of this one here, okay? Now, one of the things that you can do with a, a pantry knife or a utility knife is use it to um, cut up cooked chicken uh, or a cooked um, poultry of some sort. It's not the proper knife for doing it. There are slicing knives that are better um, adapt to doing that job, and we'll talk about those. But this knife is, is uh, used for that purpose by many professional chefs. Okay, it, reason being, it's sharp. It has a nice long blade for reach. The blade doesn't have that exaggerated contour, as you noticed, okay? So it's very easy to handle uh, when you're working with a piece of poultry. You can get this in between the joints and, and make your cut, separate the uh, joints, and, and, and so on. So, um, I don't know if I rated this knife yes, yesterday, or not yesterday, but in the previous video, video number one. This knife gets a 5, my highest rating, um, as compared to all the other knives uh, that, that you'll be using. Okay, there'll be some other 5s, but it won't be this one. I don't like that one. And it won't be this one because it's really not necessary. So this one gets a 3, okay, because it doesn't live up to the, to the standard of, of this knife. Even though it's got all those flutes and it looks cool and, you know, uh, whoever uses it on TV, these famous guys, that's the one you want. This one here, I'm only going to give it three. Actually, uh, based on the fact that in the group of knives, this one's not necessary. It, it, it'll get used if you have it. Like I said, your main one gets dull, you're going to reach for this. But you can live without this knife. So. You know, when, when you're purchasing knives, they come in sets of uh, sometimes six, eight knives, and, and a lot of it is unnecessary. This is one that's unnecessary. You can get away with this one. Um, another thing while I'm here, I have a cutting board. And you'll notice that this cutting board is larger than any of my knives. All right? And there's a reason for that. Cutting board is very important. It's as important as any knife you'll use simply because it, it, it does two things. It provides a work surface which is stable. Now you'll notice this one isn't very stable, okay? But when we do cut, <coughs> when we actually get to the point where we're going to cut something, what we're going to do is put a damp towel under this. And this is a trick that's used, not a trick, but a, a method that's used in most every restaurant, any good chef will tell you that you put a moist towel under your cutting board and that's going to keep it from moving. The other thing is this is a nylon cutting board. They come in different colors too. 
and it's it's quite large as you can see all right and it's got some bulk to it but when you're working with it and you're doing that 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 pumping rotation there to make your your cuts okay you notice that I'm never coming off the board right see there's plenty of room for that knife to work even this way I mean but if you go on a diag there's absolutely so much room there and that's what you want you don't want your you know cutting board I've seen cutting boards that are this big and the knife is this big I mean you, you don't want that because you just you're gonna rock off the board uh, you're gonna you know half when you go to make that final cut it's gonna come off this way you don't want that to happen so my recommendation and I know it's a matter of convenience for a lot of people it's easier to store a small cutting board but if it doesn't perform well for you I mean why use it it's better to to get a good size cutting board that has some bulk to it this one here as I said is made out of nylon and it's got some Mars in it but when you're done using it uh, when I get done using a cutting board what I do is I wash it and rinse it in hot water and then I apply a spray of um, uh, hydrogen peroxide yeah, you heard it right. What you do is you take a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, take the cap off, get a spray uh, fitting that will fit that bottle because hydrogen peroxide is, is not, does not like light. So if you pour it into a clear spray bottle, um, it, it defeats the purpose because it, it will uh, cause the hydrogen peroxide to, to lose all of its properties, or most of them. But hydrogen peroxide is a disinfectant. It will not hurt you, okay? And what it does is it, it just leaves that surface uh, nice and clean and, and kills all the bacteria in it. But it has to be clean to start with. You can't, you know, just spray hydrogen peroxide on a dirty board. Um, the other thing about the nylon is that it will not hurt the edge of your knife as badly as some of these glass cutting boards that I've seen uh, or fake laminated hardwood cutting boards. Um, this will not do that. The other option, which uh, you won't find in commercial restaurants because the health departments won't allow them, is sometimes a maple uh, cutting board with end grain facing up. Okay, so they're usually laminated together and the end grain faces up. The reason that end grain faces up is when you're cutting and it mars the, the, the board, all right, the moisture and the tendency of the wood is to heal that wound that you put in the knife or in the board by the knife. So it protects your blade, doesn't you know dull it, and uh, has the ability of healing and the Mars won't show up. Unfortunately this is not an organic material so it will eventually get marred up quite a bit but it's also more resistant to marring than the wood is. Now this cutting board is quite old and as you get better with the knife you're going to notice that you're not going to be using a lot of pressure. You don't need a lot of pressure with a good sharp knife used in the proper manner. So this board is, is very very slightly marred, has a lot of life in it, tons of life in it. Now I mentioned that they come in different colors. Um, in the home one board is going to be plenty for you especially if it's this big. Uh, they're easy to store. It looks big, but it, it, it'll fit anywhere. I mean, you can put it in your oven with your other pots and pans if you store stuff in there. Obviously, this won't take any heat, so don't turn your oven on. Uh, or you can, you know, stand it on its side in some cabinets, under the sink, whatever. Um, it, it's not going to be a problem to store, and you're going to find that it's, it's going to be a tremendous advantage when you are um, preparing a meal, simply because you have the room for the knife to be used correctly, and you also have uh, enough room that the vegetables can be pushed to a corner, um, and that's great. Now, the only disadvantage about a big board like this is the you, you get the vegetables off of it. You'll see a lot of chefs use their knife and pick it up with their hand, and they have something next to them, some sort of a container they want to put them in, and they'll slide them off into the container. That's perfectly fine. Um, it's not that heavy. All right, you know, if you pick it up with two hands and you have a, a bowl here, a stainless steel bowl or something, you just slide it off into your bowl and bingo. Now remember, you only don't, you don't have to do it as much because you've got a bigger board, so it's not as big a task as you would think. 
I mean, I could probably slice two or three cumber, cucumbers on here, very thin or even thick or whatever, and they'll still fit on this board. Pick it up, go to my container, and, you know, gently put them in. So that's the advantage of having a great board. Uh, in a restaurant, you'll see that the boards are uh, different colors. Um, some boards will be specifically used for meat product, and they can even go further with that, uh, meat product and poultry. Okay, so there'll be two different color boards, uh, and another board, maybe a white board, for all cutting of vegetables and, and, and things like that. Um, the reason being is cross-contamination. Sometimes, as, as diligent as we are in a restaurant, um, you may find that a cutting board is convenient, and you go to grab it. Well, at least this way, if you're going to grab one that hasn't been through the sanitizing in the dishwasher, um, you can at least be assured that if you've got a cucumber, you're cutting another cucumber on it. This is stuff that's that's uh, going to be safe on that board. It shouldn't be contaminated by chicken or, or, or blood from meat. Problem comes in when someone takes a board like this and starts cutting poultry on it, then you have a problem. So. Uh, in a restaurant, you will see color-coded boards for that reason, and it just keeps things uh, a lot safer. You know, if you cut poultry on a poultry board, even if it was used, poultry's going to get cooked the whole nine yards. If you cut lettuce on a poultry board, you got a problem, because that's not going to get cooked. It's not going to kill the bacteria in the cooking process. So, um, that's the end of video two. I hope that I've uh, answered some questions that may have been left unanswered uh, in the last video. Now, I just want to make it clear again, somebody asked me the difference between the carbon steel versus the stainless steel versus the carbon stainless steel. Okay, real quick. The carbon steel is used in many knives and has the ability to take a very, very good edge during sharpening. Okay, it will sharpen very nicely. Problem is that it's, it, it does uh, get rusty and it does have the ability to transfer metallic taste to your food, especially greens and things of that nature. Also, it's a softer steel. Well, it's hard, but it's still uh, susceptible to damage, and it does have to be cleaned up with a steel um, often to maintain that razor sharp edge. Stainless steel has the ability to. Uh, not rust, therefore not transferring any uh, unwanted flavor to things such as vegetables or fruits. Um, but it's difficult to put a good edge on the blade. Okay? And uh, it will hold an edge, but it's difficult to get a really good edge. And it also will um, deteriorate eventually, which, you know, all sharp edges will after use. Carbon stainless steel has the best of both worlds. It will take a very good edge quite easily, okay, it will maintain that edge fairly well, just like the other two, and it will not transfer any unwanted flavors to your food. And um, just a review, chef's knife, fancy chef's knife, you know, from food TV people, okay, I don't like it, it's too short. You see that stroke doesn't come up high, so you know cutting a larger vegetable is going to be a problem. Chef's knife, a little bit more room under there. You don't want to stick your finger under there. Okay, and that rocking motion, perfect. Utility knife, pantry knife, not really meant for this. Okay, my knuckles are banging every time I do that. Could you use it in a pinch? Yes. Is it being used for something it's not supposed to be? Yes. This knife is not meant for that. Carve a turkey, carve a poultry, uh, chicken, things like that. It'll work on, on the cooked uh, poultry. Um, any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, and that's it for video number two. In the next video, we're going to talk about some other knives you may find in the knife set. And we're also going to rate them as their... Um, usefulness in the kitchen and as to whether you can get along without it or not. Okay, so I hope I uh, answered most of the questions out there, um, or tried to anyway, and um, that's it for today. 
We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.